Adventures! I'm on my way. What's up, everybody? I hope you're ready for a nice, non-controversial, very peaceful, fun, lighthearted stream today. You know? Uh, in all seriousness, uh, <laughs> what the fuck? I was trying, honestly, I, I, I was trying to just sail out of here with a nice, calm stream. You know, talk about some fun, nerdy things. You know, speculate about some theories, talk about leaks, rumors, etc., etc. And then two of the most like ridiculous, weird things happened. It's all over Twitter. It's all anybody's talking about. And so we're gonna play a little game here, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna play a little game called what? Ride the fence and. and Try not to get canceled. All right, I'm pulling into the tower. I'll see you in a second. Here we go. This is, the, you know, this is, this feels like, uh, this feels like the battle music that Ezra probably listens to before he goes out to fight the Nazis. You know what I mean? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's a Friday show. Welcome, 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 everybody. Come on into Nerdvengers Tower. Let's get this going. Uh, look, in all seriousness, I want to say on the outset, look, some of you will not love uh, the thumbnail and the contents of uh, discussion here on today's stream, but I want to be very clear about something. I want to be very, very clear about something before we get into this. My intention with this is to poke fun at all aspects of it and try to be lighthearted and have fun with the ridiculous things that we are sort of handed uh, as fans of this kind of stuff you know some of you guys have sort of brought up the uh evangeline lily stuff yesterday as we were ending the stream and i was like i don't know what the hell that's about uh found out a little bit more about it uh yesterday and i just want to say like obviously we all have different opinions about these these kind of things and i think that one of the reasons that everybody's talking about this you know these two particular things is because they're so dang crazy and they really just fall into uh, some really weird, uh, you know, political situation or whatever you want to call it. Look, social media is fucking weird. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, I personally was not having a good week uh, with interacting with people on social media, and I could feel myself getting a little bit triggered, uh, and I could feel myself like looking for a fight uh, out there on social media, and so. Uh, as much as maybe I didn't want to get into these particular topics or do it, I was like, you know what, let's let's do it and let's bring some of that energy of uh, basically, man, all this shit's ridiculous. We're probably in a simulation. What timeline is this? What the fuck is going on? So that's kind of where I'm at with it. Uh, if you are angry by some of the stuff that I say uh, in my sort of takes about these sort of things, I hope that you get angry, but then, you know, kind of not angry at some point because you know one of the things that i'm really good at 10 out of 10 like would recommend is uh riding the fence i'm such a good fence rider that i expect you to kind of be watching the stream today and being like this a little bit being like oh man i can't believe oh dude, no don't josh oh you son of a bitch oh wait okay yeah yeah you know, that i like that i like that more of that more of that more of that more of that and then I'll be like, oh, uh, 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 I don't like what he's saying there. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. What's he trying to say? Is he implying something? You're not a scientist. You're not a scientist. And then and then you're like, oh, wait, no, no, no. Okay, yeah, yeah. Fuck those people. You know what I mean? <laughs> so let's have fun 
with the uh, fucked up, crazy, dopamine dependent uh, brains that we have left uh, in our in our skull caps. So here we go. Where do you guys want to start? You want to start with uh, Evangeline, or do you want to start with uh, Ezra Choky McJokerson? What should we poll it? Should we poll it? Should we throw a poll up? I think we should. Let's pull it up. Let's make chaos with it. Oh, and Colin, I'll get into this more later on in the show. But uh, oh, wait, I didn't put gambling on yet. You know what? You know what? Let's get this gambling going on. Because if there's any way to take, uh, uh, you know, a tower full of degenerate nerds, all ready to fight each other over any uh, any little thing, and you know what? Let's throw in something that's super American. Something I'm really passionate about. Something I think enriches the lives of of many people. Gambling! Let's throw some gambling into the mix. You got some controversy. You got some vaccinations. You got some some Nazis. You got, hey, let's throw the whole fucking thing in there. Light it on fire. Throw a match onto there with some gasoline. Turn around. Take the cigar out of your mouth. Look to the camera and say, Thank God it's Friday. God, that was a horrible... A horrible um, Arnold Schwarzenegger impression. My apologies on that. You know, I got to be honest here too, guys. Do you know what I think the worst thing that happened this week is? We're going to talk about all this crazy stuff, right? But the worst thing that happened this week, do you know the worst thing that's currently going on out there on social media? People continue... To be really excited about the Batman. I can't believe it. I honestly can't believe it. And I'm trying to be chill about it. But like just a couple of days ago, uh, and I saw a couple of videos and articles uh, pop up about this. The uh, it, it, it basically is confirmed now that Matt Reeves had the Ben Affleck Batman script and played silly games to sort of wait it out, get that thing killed, and move along with his own selfish hockey pad wearing sparkly vampire skin Batman. I can't believe it. I can't believe... Do you know what he said about the script too? And this is actually like documented. This isn't, I'm not even playing around here. This has actually happened. Do you know what he said about the script, Ben Affleck's script? He said, yeah, it was really action heavy. It was really connected to the DCEU. It felt a little bit like James Bond. But I wanted to do it a BDSM Riddler. So, that's currently what's bugging me the most. I, I can't, I, I honestly can't believe it. Um, we'll see, man. Look, Paul from Heavy Spoilers, really excited about that movie. A lot of people really excited about that movie. Um, to me, that's even more ridiculous than what's going on with all these different folks and what they said and what they did, okay? It's the most ridiculous thing that's going on in the world right now. Anyway, <clears throat> okay. Ooh, Ezra. Dude, it's like right down the middle. It's like right down the middle. I don't know what to I don't know what to make of this. I don't know what to do. What should we do? Which one should we do? I guess we'll start with Ezra. He's like winning by just a little bit right now. Okay, so TLDR, what happened with Ezra? I'm not gonna watch the video. Like, we're not gonna watch the video here. But Ezra Miller kind of randomly although some people have pointed out in the video it seems like it's almost like personal like did they do something or say something to him uh regardless he made a video about how members of the kkk which i i think is like actually still around and still operates and still like honestly look here's the thing i i i don't fucking know okay i did zero research for this segment I decided to do what most people do on the internet. Just talk about it like I know what the fuck I'm talking about. 
and uh, espouse my opinions as though they were fact, okay? I'm going to assume that in some way, those people are out there operating and, 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 and do some stuff, okay? And uh, Ezra decided to come out and say that he wanted them to kill themselves and if they didn't he would uh he would use he would he would do it he would do it now this is a real rubik's cube of a pr move okay public relations is a really interesting thing ezra you know he's got a weird reputation out there i think even before the icelandic choking uh, Ezra already had a, a weird reputation. He's just kind of a strange guy, right? He's eccentric. And look, you know, obviously, like, people should be who they are, and you should be able to express, you know, what you want to express. But at the same time, like, you can't deny the dude's weird. It's a weird dude. So that, you know, automatically, some people are just going to be like, okay, you know, not, not necessarily a dude for me. And then, of course, there's the choking situation where he choked a fan in Iceland, I know that, like, some people online are trying to claim that that was, like, a stunt or a joking thing. Uh, it was in the Hollywood Trades, man. They reported about it. It was definitely not a joke. I don't know exactly what happened about it. He has never addressed it. Warner Brothers has never addressed it. Um, he's never... We don't know. Like, was there a settlement? Was there, like, a hush money? I, we have no idea, right? Uh, but he definitely was wasted at the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, went out and choked somebody in Iceland. Now, look, we've all been there. Let's be honest. We've all been there. So we have a little empathy for him for that. But in the, the PR reality that is our world, a lot of people not letting that go. On top of that, like, I think Ezra has a little bit of a, a rep as far as, uh, like, some people think he backstabbed Zack Snyder. Okay? Uh, because he helped the flash movie and he like worked on it in a writing capacity and at least in some regard and it is said to erase all of uh, Zach's movies and stuff like that right so some there's basically here's the thing from an objective perspective he just has a few PR issues and honestly it's such a it's such a interesting judo move of PR it's like he's looking out there into the world and saying like who do people inarguably hate more than me and he had to go, I'm sure, through a lot of lists, like a lot of things that like, oh, yeah, people dislike that. But let's be real. They hate me way fucking more. You know what I mean? Like a long laundry list of things, you know, like people that tailgate. You know what I mean? Like uh, no, people that bring noisy babies into movie theaters. You know, there's all, there's all these lists of things, you know, and uh, the, 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 the KKK, you know, pretty good pick, pretty good, pretty good, solid pick. As far as uh, a, a group of folks that, uh, you know, I would say 99% of folks, uh, you know, despise them, hate them, ha hate what they stand for. And so in a really odd judo public relations kind of a move, you know, Ezra just kind of comes out and, and is basically like, yo, fuck the KKK, am I right, bro? And like, yeah, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people were, were pointing out that, yeah, of course. You know what I mean? The question is, you know, the question is, is like, is this, like, is this going to work? You know what I mean? Like, to be honest with you, like, this feels like, I'm just going to say, it, this feels like some fucking Logan Paul level PR craziness. Like a super calculated, like, let's get out here and like, do this thing and look i'm not trying to like throw any shade or 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 or, or, or uh upset anybody that's a fan of mr john campia but uh you know campia fell into the trap man campia fell into the trap he basically said i don't think we should threaten uh murdering people and the in internet sort of read that as john is pro uh kk nazi and that's the judo, that's the judo trick of it. You know what I mean? That's the trick of it. That's why it's such a brilliant PR move. Like, you almost can't... You know what Ezra's trying to do? You know what it kind of feels like he's trying to do? He's trying to say, if you don't like me, 
or if you are hating on me, even though I choked that bitch in Iceland, man. Oh, she was such a bitch. Let's fucking choke to slam her ass. Let's go. If you hate me, you like them. That's what it feels like. And look, man, all I can do is speak for myself. Ultimately, I don't really care. I never really cared for Ezra as a personality, meaning I've never been a big fan of his. I feel like the, the Chokey McChokerson Iceland situation is probably telling of uh, what kind of dude he is. And uh, to be honest with you, even his stuff in uh, The Flash, just from a character perspective, like, I don't like his Barry Allen. You know what I mean? I, I just don't. I think it's the weakest part of Zack's stuff, um, and I'm not really into it. I, I don't know what to say. It's such a weird thing. It, like... It's my, that's, my, that's, that's my take. That's my take. My take is that... Man, fuck this dude. That's that's my take ultimately, and uh, I I just think that it's it's a really weird kind of out of nowhere, calculated PR decision. Now, on the complete flip side of it, what happened with uh, you know Evangeline Lilly? That this one's a mystery to me. This is a mystery to me. I'm not. I don't. It's not that I don't understand where she's coming from. It's that I. It, it's an. It's a weirdly poor PR move. Do you know what I mean? Like, Ezra, the, you know, despite all of his uh, ridiculousness, actually made, from just sort of an objective public relations standpoint, a, 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 a pretty solid attempt. Like, I'm not buying it, but it's a pretty solid attempt. Evangeline Lilly, and I actually didn't fully understand this until yesterday. I had assumed she had just posted some stuff on social media, but apparently she had actually um, been at a protest, maybe in D.C. or something like that, um, about mandates for for the vaccination. Now, look, man, this is treacherous territory, especially on social media, right? Like, people get super triggered about this. Obviously, we're living in this thing. You know, the situation's crazy. People have very, very strong opinions about this. I'm not really going to get into uh, e efficacy, you know, medical advice, like all that sort of stuff. Uh, just from a public relations perspective, it is really, really interesting that she would choose to do this. There's only really two options as to why she would do this. Number one, uh, she didn't fully understand how much of a hornet's nest she was going to shake or number two and this is probably the more likely scenario she feels that strongly about this thing about mandates i guess like here's the thing to me is that i don't know like are there actually mandates like i don't know if anybody in the in the chat can actually answer me and help me out here i don't know like are there actually mandates I know that there's a lot of uh, restrictions, you know what I mean? Depending on the state, depending on the the business, depending on the flight or whatever, there are restrictions, like, for sure. But are there actually, like, mandates? There, there might be, like, in other parts of the world, right? But I don't think there really are any uh, in America, right? Am I wrong? So, on the one hand, I'm like, I don't necessarily understand why one would feel so compelled to protest a thing that the last time I checked, like, didn't the Supreme Court shut that shit down anyway? Like, it seemed to me that that's not actually really a thing. Now, on the flip side of this, though, what happened when she did this kind of proves her point, and it proves a lot of people's points that I think are you know, taking aim at more specifically than a mandate, actually an attitude within the culture, right? But that is not actually the same thing as what you're, you know, protesting. But the what I'm trying to say here is like, so I believe the sign she had said vaccinated uh, Democrat against mandates or something to that effect. Like that's that's what she's, she's doing. And that became she's anti-vax. Okay. So that's what happened. Like we made a leap from being against 
a mandate, which again, I fully acknowledge is a little bit weird. Like, are there mandates? I'm not sure. Like, I wouldn't be. Look, I'm not protesting shit, to be honest with you. I'm not. I, I'm not doing that. But even if I were, this isn't something I'd be like, oh, this is the one. We got to we got to stop this. OK, but even acknowledging that the reaction from people on social media and like the craziness that I saw unfold yesterday, it proves that, yes, we're on a fucking slippery slope of Thunderdome. Facts don't matter anymore. And motherfuckers be crazy. So the real thing here, and this is the ultimate point, ready? Nuclear take, mic drop, full circle, buckle up your butthole. Here's the truth. It's game, set, match, Ezra Bridger, or Ezra Miller, rather. Like, he actually is playing the game better, fully acknowledging and understanding what, what is going on. It's way more disingenuous. It's way more biggity bullshit playing the game. Not not a real. It's not real. But he at least understands the world that we're living in. It's crazy. Like. People just essentially like saying that her having that feeling means that she's anti-vax, that she, you know, she's she's on this uh, enemy, she's an enemy now of our side, et cetera, et cetera. The slippery slope. And I thought, I was like, well, how do I even talk about it? You know what I mean? And I think, like, I did the best job that I could uh, of sort of, like, parsing that line. You know what I mean? It's just, it's sad that this is where we're at with social media, but I sort of ebb and flow back and forth between do I spend my time and energy like being upset about it and trying to change it or do I acknowledge what it is and just uh you know keep it moving you know what I mean and for me it's like more of like a a keep it moving sort of thing of course there are all sorts of uh nuance and, and various ways to feel about it and I'm sure that the chat I'm sure you guys are being really nice to each other and uh you know peacefully calmly uh, you know, talking to each other about about different things. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm sure that, that it's, a, it's a wonderful chat, the best one we've had all week. I think that uh, it's just, it's a broken down situation. Like, I wish we could just be a little bit more chill about these sort of things. You know what I mean? Like, in all actuality, I hope and I think that when it comes to, uh, especially when it comes to Evangeline, like, here's honestly what I think. I think, who fucking cares? Um, I think the movies and uh, the, the work that she does, I hope that it continues. If it's dope, I think people should enjoy it and judge her based on that. Um, and, I, and I think and I expect and I hope that that'll just blow over uh, in a little bit. You know, not only for her, but for, like, society. You know what I mean? It does, again, sort of prove just how crazy motherfuckers are out there on social media. It's a bizarre time. You know what I mean? And ultimately, when it comes to Ezra, like, I think he's full of shit. I think it's a PR stunt. And I don't particularly like the guy. But despite all of that, I'm still going to try to give The Flash a fair shake. Even though I think this movie's going to try to reset Snyder stuff. And I'm really, I'm trepidatious to say the least. Uh, I'm going to try to give it a fair chance, you know. Uh, the Batman is dead to me, you know, and, and finding out that Matt Reeves, like, he had the bat, like, here's the thing, guys. He had the bat, like, can we take it back, can we take it to some real shit? I know, I know, look, all you guys are all mad and all this stuff, just, just, just shut your mouth and listen, listen to this. We had the Bad Flick movie. Okay, this should get you more upset than that other stuff. You guys picked the wrong stuff to get mad about. Listen, we had the Ben Affleck Batman script, okay? We had Ben Affleck, who's a brilliant creative mind, great writer, great director, and he was in to the role and to the DCEU. And he had what sounds like to me an amazing, incredible script. Matt Reeves rejected it Said, not only am I not going to make this movie, but I also think you should wait and do my movie. It's like, look. 
<sighs> I can't believe more people don't see it. I can't believe it! So, that's the real news. Um, and then as far as, like, other bits that are out there, I don't even know, guys. Let me, uh, let me try to check. Let me try to check and see if there's anything else going on. My ultimate, uh, ultimately what today's stream became and what I kind of wanted to just do was, in the midst of my incredible frustration, uh, with internet and, uh, issues of this kind, I wanted to get on here with no script whatsoever, no research whatsoever, and try to dance between the raindrops and talk about the most controversial, ridiculous shit ever, make fun of it, and try to not get canceled. Put a one into the chat if you think I'll probably get canceled after this stream. Let me know how I did. Let me know. You know, briefly just kind of like looking through, man, I don't really see a, a ton of crazy news out there other than even more horrible stuff um, than what I talked about today. I really don't. We can talk more about uh, Boba and Mandalorian. I think we talked a little bit about that more yesterday. Let me see. Let me see what's going on in the chat. Hey, look, I don't see a lot of ones. I can't tell if that's because gambling's on or if that's because uh, you guys are all arguing with each other. But, uh... Either way, maybe we should just get into Q&A. You know what I mean? Maybe we should just talk about all of this sort of stuff. Oh, here, here come some ones. Here come a few ones. 1.5. I'll take it. Look, my goal was to upset everybody a little bit. Like, not like one side over the other. Like, I kind of want everybody to be upset. Just be upset a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Boba talk, boba talk, boba talk. Boba talk, boba talk, boba talk. Put a one for what? Uh, if you think I'm going to get canceled. Think we'll get Luke Grogu and Cad Bane in the next episode? Oh, I hope so, man. Ooh, I hope so. Um, You know what else I was thinking about? I want to know what you guys think about this. Dude, this stream is so uh, off the rails. Like, I legitimately had, uh, like, you guys you guys don't even realize. Like, I was literally like, man, I'm so triggered this week. I'm so upset. Like, uh And then, like, we were a little bit late today. Like, uh, you know, like, real life, real life type stuff has been crazy. And so it's been a crazy week. And I was like, let's do it. Let's dance in the raindrops. Let's get into here. With no plan and talk about the most triggering, controversial shit you've ever heard. And so, boom. There you have it. That's what's going on today. That's where we're at. You need dad jokes? Hmm. Oh, episode... Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Episode 2 of Peacemaker. I watched episode 2 of Peacemaker yesterday a little bit. I did. I did. I gave it a shot. Uh, and I gave it a shot because of Colin, I believe. Colin was the one that, that supered, and we got into it. Bro, what the fuck, man? Like, look, if you like the show, that's cool. You know what I mean? Again, I don't know how many times I got to say this. I don't know how many times I got to be like, it's okay if you like the shitty Peacemaker show. I mean, the show. It's cool. But wow, is the show just not for me, man. Like... And I appreciate you guys, and I appreciate you, uh, you know, wanting me to, to like the show, and I appreciate you liking the show a lot and all that. I mean, look, if if that's your thing, if you're really into it, Bob's your uncle, man. Good on you. Good on you. But damn. Like, I'm sitting here, I'm just watching, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's not for me. I saw a thing, too, that somebody said, uh, 
Somebody said uh, that show's more anticipated than uh, Book of Boba Fett. Like that, more people are like searching for that show online, or than Book of Boba Fett. What the fuck? What the fuck, bro? A uh, couple of things I want to say before we get into um, before we get into Q and A. Uh, I just want to say that yes, we will be doing a prime stream today at one p.m. Talking to you a little bit about some business stuff. Uh, also, I am looking for another editor, and uh, I put something out on Twitter yesterday, and I'm in conversations with a few folks, and I'd really like to to hire on an editor, maybe a couple of people, just to help me take uh, some of the content to the next level. Um, so if you are interested, hit me up, like DM me on Discord or Twitter or something like that, and let me know. We can get into that. Um, I also want to say that, believe it or not, we're, we're very close to doing another $200 GameStop gift card giveaway. Uh, the Nerd Vengers, of course, the greatest online community there ever was. The folks in chat you see next with a badge next to their name. Keep the lights on over here. Get a bunch of cool benefits. Um, also, one of the things we do each month is give away a $200 gift card to a lucky Nerd Venture member. So if you've been thinking about becoming a Nerd Venture member, you're on the fence, you're like, I don't know what to do. Dude, do it before the end of the month. Do it before the end of the month, and then maybe you can get a $200 gift card, and uh, everyone will be furious with you. If you are a Nerd Venture for only like three or four days, and you win one of the gift cards, everyone will hate you. But... You'll have a $200 gift card. Fuck them, bro. Get some cool shit. Get the new Pokemon. Get a Switch Lite. Get something really cool. You know what I'm saying? So, do your thing, man. We're a really inclusive community over here. Pretty much as long as you don't argue with and disagree with me too much, you're good to go. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, obviously. I mean, look, Moss Moss is still around here. So, uh, yeah, eclectic group. A lot of fun stuff. And uh, what else is going on? Um, I'm trying to get it. I've got a lot of like fun, like nerdy videos that I want to get out. Like I want to talk about Luke Skywalker in the next episode. I want to talk about the secret invasion leaks. I want to talk about um, multiverse of madness rumors and such. So there's a lot of like stuff that I'd like to get to today. But also like I'm exhausted. I'm mentally exhausted. I'm at my wits end. All I want to do is play the new Pokemon game and forget about Ezra Miller choking Evangeline Lilly at a protest about vaccinations. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to. I don't want to. Oh, I'm out. That's how I feel. And by the way, that's also probably how Kevin Feige feels. Kevin Feige probably feels that way, too. You know what I mean? He's like, Ezra Miller said what? What the fuck? Evangeline, no! You know, Evangeline, no! Oh, one other thing I wanted to say. One other thing. Everybody, man, calm down. Put a one into the chat if you've been triggered at one point in the show today. I'm just trying to make sure I'm doing a good job. Put a one into this into the chat if you have been triggered at at least one part of today's stream. Dang, nobody has been? Are you telling me I've done an okay job of, of, of making fun of all of it and not dipping? Are you guys saying I'm going to be okay? I'm going to have a career? I'm not going to have to get a real job? Do I have to? Am I gonna? Do I have to fill out some apps? Drive through. You know, I could try to squeeze this kind of stuff. Imagine, uh, imagine me at your drive through, right? Like you pull up and you're you're getting your like quarter pounder or your McGriddle or something like that, and then like I'm there. You know what I mean? And then I'd be like. Hey, what's up, employee, uh, customer? What's up, smash like? And also, did you hear this latest thing about... The and then they're like, dude, shut the fuck up. And give me my quarter pounder. And shut... And shut... Shut up. 
Do you guys accept Nerdcoin? Nice. Yeah, 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 y
Let's get into Q&A. Here we go, ladies and gentle beings. Uh, of course, if you want to throw a super chat in there, uh, it does support the channel, helps us out a lot. And uh, I'll go over every single super chat that comes in within reason. If you don't have any loot, please don't worry about it. I'll try to get into some uh, stuff in the chat chat as well. Um, yeah, so let's just get into it, see what people have got to say. Uh, Big Stevie W says, Interesting that Luke's body double from Mando was one of the X-Wing pilots right before the episode that could possibly feature Luke. That's true. That's true. That's actually a really, really interesting point there, Stevie. I wonder... I wonder if they're just... Like, what do you think? They're trying to kind of squeeze or get the most out of him being on set? Is it one of those situations where they were like, uh, oh, we're not really using you that much anymore because of Shamook, and now, um, therefore, we, we still want to have you do something on the show? I don't know exactly, but, uh, yeah, I, th I felt like he did a good job. You know, that episode, again, here's the thing about Book of Boba Fett. That episode's so good. Like, it's such a weird thing. This is, maybe I didn't, like, actually do, like, a terrific job of kind of, like, really focusing on this point in my video yesterday. But the reason this is such an interesting discussion is because episode five is not just good. It is amazing. Like, I don't think we'd even be having this discussion as much if, like, Book Boba Fett episode five was all Mando and it was like just okay. And we were like, okay, that's interesting. That's an interesting little Mando adventure you did there. That's an interesting little side quest. Nah, dog. He came in there and slapped up all the grandmas, was cutting people in half. It was amazing, dude. It was amazing. And so that juxtaposition is really where I think you get some of the issues. That's not at all what you were talking about, Stevie. But I appreciate the support. Colin McGoldrick with a $20 holler says, Josh, did you watch Pe Peacemaker? First of all, I appreciate all the support. But I want you to know that because of your, my guilt towards the super chats that you sent in yesterday, and even this one, you know, people think I don't feel things. I feel things. Yeah, I watched episode two. It was late last night. I finished up a session of Halo with the boys. And, uh... Yeah, I threw it on at the end of the night, and I'm just like. Not for me, dog. Not for me. Appreciate you, though. Tanner Lambert with a $10 holla says, Did you, uh, Josh, did you say the Moon Knight actor died in a ski accident two days ago? After, wait, did you say that the, I didn't. Take my money and keep it the good work. Uh, I had heard about this, yes, but I didn't say anything. I don't think I've commented on it. I mean, obviously, that's a tragedy. Um, absolutely sucks. I don't know. I actually didn't know too much about, like, his role in Moon Knight. So uh, maybe it's awesome. And it'll be, like, a cool way to kind of remember him or whatever. But, yeah, regardless, I mean, it's kind of sad, right? It's kind of sad. Appreciate the support, man. Uh, Dan Larkin says, props to Evangeline. Need more mainstream voices to speak out against government overreach. Choky McChoker face. Bro, we know. We agree. Move on. Yeah, so look, I understand this perspective, Dan. And I, it's like, I kind of want to be there too. Because, look, I think like... Look, to me, my fence. You know what I mean? Let's, let me get real comfy on this fucking fence for a second before I answer you here, Dan. Oh, the fence feels so nice. Um, here's the deal, bro. I totally understand not wanting government overreach. I totally understand not wanting uh, mandates. And, like, I'm sure there are all sorts of situations where things are either, like, similar to a mandate are going on or something uh, to that regard are happening. But I think that the real... The issue with that stance is just the lack of nuance. And, honestly, this crazy world that we live in. Like, I don't know what the fuck is real, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I hear so much shit, and I think that I think, you know, a lot of us can sort of relate to this, where it's like, dude, I don't know what the... F I don't know. I don't know. Like, it, like, I just don't. I don't have all the information, and I don't feel that, personally, I just don't think that mandates... I mean, maybe I'm missing a bunch of shit, but I just don't think that mandates are actually, like, happening. Do you know what I mean? Like, from a, from a business perspective, let me just say one thing here. Like, from a business perspective, right, if I was running an event and I knew maybe my liability insurance was going to be 10 times as much unless 
I mandated that everybody that worked in my whatever situation were vaccinated, then bro, that's the free fucking market. That's like a no brainer. You've got to get, you've got to be vaccinated to work here. Period. That's a that's like a pro capitalist, pro free market, pro choice decision. Me as a business owner, I should have the freedom to make that decision to save my business money, right? But then that would sort of run against this whole idea of no mandates. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like, what mandates are we talking about? Are you talking about mandates uh, for colleges? Are you talking about mandates for places to work? Now, look, there are situations there that I think are obviously ridiculous. And like for one of them for me personally is like, especially if a nurse has already had uh, COVID or whatever and they don't like I could see situations like this. But here's the thing. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I don't. I don't have enough info to make a stance one way or the other. And I think when it comes to Evangeline, she obviously feels very, very strongly about this. And I'm sure she'll garner some support and she'll garner a lot of negativity. You know, that sucks. But that's the reality of it. My point, the bigger macro point here, is that if you are a big star, like this is probably just a, a bad it's probably just a bad stance to take. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it just period. Like, it's just from the PR perspective, it's probably not the, the best chance to take. Now, is she doing this specifically because she feels that pressure and she wants to work against that pressure? She understands that all this stuff is coming at her and she's ready and willing to to die on that hill and to, and to make that stand for freedom? Maybe. You know what I mean? Maybe. Uh, and if that's really how she feels, good on her, man. Look. Like, here's my thing. Like, ultimately, and again, this is like some super professional level fence sitting here. But, I mean, yeah, I think she should be well within her rights to do that. I think it's a damn shame that her saying what she's saying just automatically means she's anti-vax. That part of it's screwed up. But again, from a PR perspective, like, dude, it is what it is. You know what I mean? You can't. I don't know. It's a tough one for me, bro. That's what I'm saying. Amber says. Ten Dalahala says, I know you're expecting to see Luke slash Grogu next episode, but what do you think are the chances we actually don't see Mando Luke Grogu at all uh, episode six and see them off screen and uh, off screen while we focus on Boba again in episode six? What do I think the chances are? Very low. Uh, and first of all, thank you for the support. I appreciate that. I have heard a lot of people talk about this and uh, a lot of folks are like, but how do we know it's going to be um, like, how do we know it's gonna? we're going to stick with Mando next episode? How do we know we're going to get Luke? How do we know that? Well, we obviously don't. We're j I'm just trying to sort of put the pieces together. I mean, number one, I was told Luke was going to be in the show. I was told Luke was going to be in the show a long time ago. And I would have literally been watching every single episode. Like, you guys know if you've been here. What do I have on the over-under list Every Tuesday morning uh, stream, every single one for Boba so far, the over under of Luke Skywalker being mentioned or seen. And one of the reasons is because I've been very confident that he's going to show up. So to me, this is the onboard ramp for that. This is like, OK, that's how they're going to do it. On top of that, Amber, I really don't think John and Dave are going to write an episode that has that kind of an ending. Where he's like, first, I've got to go see a little friend and then not show us the little friend the next episode. Like, do you really think they're going to write an episode like that? I don't think so. Uh, appreciate the support, though. Dan Larkin says, yes, there are mandates in certain states as well for healthcare workers and other parts of the population. We should speak up before it's an issue. You know, I, I can appreciate that. I think the healthcare worker thing for me is a weird one. Um... I think uh, the state by state thing is also kind of a kind of a strange one. My understanding of this, though, Dan, is that um, it's not like a ubiquitous situation. I think it's like kind of nuanced as far as what are you actually doing? What are you trying to do? Um, yeah. So it's like I totally understand that. Here's my thing. I'm personally this is just me personally. I'm willing to say I really feel passionately about how crazy it is that her saying that gets conflated with being anti-vax. That to me is a bigger problem than the actual mandate problem. You might not agree. 
that's okay. We can agree and disagree. But for me personally, I'm more concerned with that reality, that slippery slope and the degradation of society and the ability to actually have conversations and have nuance than I am about the mandates themselves. I just read that differently. You know what I mean? And again, I just don't have enough. Like, I don't, I don't know. Does anybody really feel confident? Like, I would argue if you really feel confident in your understanding of what the fuck's going on in the world with this current situation, I would just question your sanity. Like, how? How could, how do you, why do you feel so confident? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, Alexa says we have mandates here in NYC. So are you saying that, like, because when I was in, um, are you saying that, like, you have to get the vax, basically? Because when I was in New York City last year, we had to show our card to get into, like, public businesses. And so businesses operating basically had to make sure that you had a vaccine card. But I don't think they were, like, knocking door to door on people and being like, you've got to get this thing. And if you don't, we're going to round you up. That's kind of more what I think of when I think of mandates. Is that happening anywhere in America? I really don't think so, right? Uh, Junior says, L.A. County has a mandate. Again, does that mean, and look, now I've got to look at the chat chat. Because now I'm actually really curious. Is that what's going on in uh, L.A.? Like, do you have to have one? Because that's what I mean. Is like, you have to have one. Yes? Is that, what, is that what's going on in L.A.? Because... I technically don't think it's the same thing, you know, not to, not to, not to play the, you know, the word game, but is, is it a thing where you literally have to, like they're going door to door, knocking on, knocking on doors. Is that what's happening? Anything indoors. Okay. I, yeah, 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 yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Look, I again, I totally understand uh, people having issues with that sort of stuff. I, I would almost be more concerned if we weren't having issues about it. You know what I mean? Like, that, that kind of makes sense to me. You know? And, and I think then there's a lot of things that, yeah, they're messed up. And, you know... It's obviously a fucking quagmire of a situation. Do you know what I mean? Like, I am certainly not here to clear up this major confusing, uh, you know, very divisive issue. What I'm here to say is that uh, as far as Evangeline Lilly is concerned, I wish her well. I hope that she continues to work for Marvel. I don't really see it ending up being a super big deal. I understand the spirit of what she is uh you know, protesting or acting out against. I certainly don't think she's anti-vax. I certainly see where she's coming from. Um, and I can support her right to do that sort of stuff and, uh, you know, say that. It's a shame that, uh, that, again, it just gets conflated the way that it gets conflated. But I can't sit up here and be like, you know, this is happening. It's fucking, uh, we got to stand up now, you know, kind of stuff. Like, I'm not, I'm not there. I'm just personally not there yet. So... What? No way. In Poland, they track phones? Bruh, is that true? Yikes. Well, I guess I'm proud to be an American. All right, moving on until the next Super Chat about it pops up. Uh, Big Stevie W says, why are we upset that a director wanted to do his own interpretation and not someone else's? Stevie? Stevie! I'm not upset. I'm not upset at Matt. I mean, okay, look, let's be real. I am upset at Matt. Why am I upset at Matt? Because he should have just done Ben Affleck's movie. He should have just... No, he should have just walked away is what he should have done. In my opinion. Um, I think the reason I'm upset by it is that it just feels to me like there was this sort of consorted effort from a lot of different camps at Warner Brothers to devalue anything Snyder Cut, to try to squash that kind of stuff and take it away. And I just really wish that we could have seen uh, the Ben Affleck Batman movie, dude. Like, he's just a, re he's a big Batman fan. He's really talented. And I think it would have been really cool for the DCEU. Um, I guess 
my sort of interpretation of how that all went down was that they burned Affleck so bad that he really barely wants to be involved or do anything like that. You know what I mean? Um, and it's like, you know, Matt's kind of saying, I mean, he's doing and saying the right thing. He's like, that wasn't my thing. I wasn't really feeling it. I wanted to do my own thing. Like, that's Q. Like, that's Q. I guess I just wish that there was a way that it could have worked out where both projects could have existed. Um, and yeah, man, I'm I'm salty that that he got handed the script, and it became a thing where he was like, "Nah, has to be all mine." Yeah, that kind of that kind of bums me out. You know what I mean? Kind of bums me out. Patrick says with a five dollar holla, Mando and Fennec got to drop off Grogu's Beskar thug life chain at Maz Kanata's tavern, where Luke and Han are hanging out. That would be awesome, dude. That would be awesome. I'm leaning more in the direction of like a Jedi temple kind of thing and like showing that kind of thing, which would be really, really cool. But uh, yeah, I mean, Maz Kanata's thing would be really, really cool. Luke and Han hanging out would be awesome. I feel like Han's probably something for uh, episode seven. But uh, yeah, it could be. Could be in uh, episode six. That'd be kind of fun. Carl says with a $10 holla. I see trailers for this new Batman and just roll my eyes. If it was made in the early 2000s, everyone would be wearing trench coat and sunglasses. I'll get my pillow ready for the three-hour nap. Oh! Tell him, Carl. Tell him. Tell him. Tell Stevie about it. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm going to go into that movie open-minded. But, um, I mean, I can't lie, bro. Like, it's just the feelings I have towards it and this latest bit that everybody, everybody just wanted to ignore it. Like, oh, this could have been the Ben Affleck Batman movie, but instead it's whatever the hell this is going to be. Um, yeah, yeah. The Exodus says, with a $10 holla, very generous, says, random super chat here. I love super chatting and supporting the cause. I support free speech and body autonomy. And we need politicians to start running on a platform of abolishing the culture war. Yeah, I mean, that would be great. Like, uh, I totally understand that. And I'm obviously, like, I'm pro-freedom. I think freedom really, really important. It's probably the, the bedrock of our culture and society. The culture war is a tricky one, man. I have I've gone back and forth on this issue. There have been times... Oh, you know what? This is a brilliant time. This is a great time to tell you guys that Jay, uh, drunk 3PO and I, we already figured this all out. We actually already solved all the problems. And in the podcast that I will release later today, Jay and myself talk about the culture war. We talk about our history with Star Wars and all these different things and dunking and, uh, you know, dogpiling and all of these different things. And what I want you to do, what I want you to do is just give that podcast a watch and or listen, you know, and think about some of the things that we talked about uh, when you're considering some of the things that are going on in social media right now. In all seriousness, we actually did do a bang-up job, uh, I think, of getting into the, 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 the issues with all this sort of stuff, you know? Um, just as one example, like I'll tease out one little element of it. When Jay and I were talking, we were talking about um, some of the things that Lucasfilm employees have said and uh, how that has sort of added to the issues or the, you know... The, the discussion in a really negative way and like Freddie Prince Jr. right like classic example and some of the things that he said after Gina got fired I think a number one you know just generally unprofessional but b also like kind of um like he wanted to hurt her or something you know what I mean like it, it did seem really vile but you know and I, and I even sort of got Jay to kind of admit this that if you had a conversation with him about it I don't know that you would walk away feeling the same way that you feel looking at a meme or a tweet okay and so some of this stuff is actually derived from the way by which we communicate and Twitter you know and I sort of like joked about this earlier but Twitter and social media in a lot of ways these days is uh it's just Thunderdome I mean, people are curating tweets to get likes and to get exposure and to do these things. And one of the best ways you can sort of hedge your bet uh, as far as engagement is concerned is to be super inflammatory towards one side or the other. Because you'll sort of galvanize 
uh, some folks, you'll trigger a bunch of other folks. It's the it's the success formula of our day. It's an unfortunate reality, but it is what it is. I am in a place where I try to just be more zen about it, and um, I'm not always perfect. Like there was some stuff that triggered me this week on social media a lot, mostly. Paul from Heavy Spoilers being really, really excited about the Batman, right? So, like, I see these things, and they and they just they trigger the shit out of me. And I have, like, literally horrible reactions to these things. And the things I want to say and the things I want to tweet, like, they're vile and they're bad. And I usually don't. Like, I'd say a good 80% of the time, I'm able to sort of uh, step back from the situation, not post it, not comment, not retweet it, not quote tweet it or whatever, because, like... You know, just to be honest with you guys, I'm fucking disciplined as fuck. You know what I mean? I'm a Zen Buddhist that meditates daily. You know what I'm saying? So normally I can let it go. But it's a really interesting exercise to be very close and to sort of recognize that draw, that little dopamine trigger, the 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 trick of social media. I think people could say some pretty fucked up shit online. I'd still probably be a pretty cool person and a pretty okay dude or dudette and do some pretty cool things. You know what I mean? So it's tough, man. I don't know if any politicians can, like, first of all, I just don't think it's viable to run anti-culture war as a platform. I, I think if you're anti, like, the other side's version of the culture war, you could probably do pretty well. Politics has probably always been a, a sort of vile popularity contest and not really a exercise in getting the best leaders. I mean, dude, you want me to you want me to break you want me to break it down from the whole level? Because the truth is, like that whole institution and system, as much as like I love uh the the I honestly I love the country. I love the idea of democracy, I love the dialectic, I love a lot of the history. Uh, that we have as a nation, but the rea the sad reality of the situation is, uh, you know, corporate interests and corrupt politicians. That's the story of the last thirty years of this country. Do you know what I mean? And so these people will use the culture war in a lot of ways to garner votes and support, and then both go to the same um, fancy dinners. You know what I mean? Max Ross says with a five dollar holla says your Ezra Vangelian takes were just fine. I think you're safe. Well, thank you, Max. I appreciate that. Can't fault Matt Reeves for wanting to do his vision and doing what it takes to get there, to, to get it though. Now I, I, I guess I guess yeah, I guess that's true. I, I I'm just butt hurt, bro. I want to see the Affleck script. Like, was Matt Reeves reading this and just like, oh my God, this is so good. This is what fans would really, really want, but it's not what I want to do. Let's trash it. And then what's up with Warner Brothers? They're like, hey, Matt, come do this Batman movie. Here's the script. Here's what we're going to do. Do you want to direct it? No, but I'll do my own. Oh, okay. Fuck Ben Affleck like that. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's the, what's the rationale over there? What's going on over there? You know what I mean? Uh, Dark Dragon X7 says, really hoping for Thor 4 trailer during Super Bowl. But we'll see. Uh, either take my money. I think you meant either way, take my money. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you very much for that. Really hoping for Thor 4 trailer, huh? I that'd be cool. That'd be real cool. I'm hoping for a Lord of the Rings trailer. Um, yo, are you guys, like, how y'all feeling about uh, the new Pokemon game? I want to look at the chat chat when this is going on, though. Let me look. Let me try to pull up the chat. What do you guys think about the new Pokemon game, man? Because, like, I was like, oh, Pokemon, like, this is going to be dope. Like, I can't wait. But the, the lack of multiplayer, I just found out about this this morning. And the lack of multiplayer, it's got me a little bit concerned. Like, I love the multiplayer aspects of Pokemon. Like, what the... What the mother-loving love of mothers, man? You know? My chat's, like, way behind anyway. And we got, like, five new members. Hey, I appreciate all y'all that joined up today. Thanks for joining the cause. 
Uh, sorry, I'm uh, I'm not on top of my game today. So normally I'll sh I'd like to shout you guys out. Maybe I can uh, do that in a second here. Matt said the fan going to like Batman one. Let's scrap it. Wonder Brother says let's go. I know, right? There's literally zero middle ground for Middle Earth. Win or die. I know that's probably true. <laughs> How many of those little bastards are there to catch? I wanna. Pokemon games are a bit blah. I love the Pokemon games. A company with that much money has no excuse to churn a lack of innovation in that series. Well, yeah, but isn't this the one that's all the innovation? Isn't there a ton of uh, stuff this week? This week you've been off, Alexa says. I have been, Alexa, okay. I just play Pokemon Go. Oh, that one. Yeah, I played that for a little while. Pokemon Go, man. Will Pokemon games ever have voice acting? Mm, probably not. New Jedi Fallen Order game? Just want a Pokemon MMO? Dude, that would be sick. Um, I think in some ways... Ah, oh, man. Bro, what, what do you guys think is more contentious? Like, the, the, the topics we talked about today or... NFTs. Like, what's more triggering? Ezra Miller, Evangeline Lilly, or NFTs? You guys let me know. What's more triggering? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, dude. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it live on air. I'm going to lose uh, I'm going to Every NFT post, every every fucking thing, every single one of you that's chatting NFTs right now, I just want you to know you're taking my blood pressure to another fucking level, and you're trying you're trying to trigger me, bro. It's about to be Josh versus the world. It's about to be Josh versus the world. Oh my god! Holy shit! Ezra is a cool dude, though. <laughs> NFTs are just JPEGs. Do you guys want to see my favorite current NFT that I have? Do y'all want to see my favorite NFT? Here it is. Let me zoom in for you. <clears throat> just sit back and bask in the glory pretty good one huh pretty good huh yeah, put that on a fucking blockchain, dog. All right, anyway. <clears throat> Thanks a lot for triggering me, guys. Thanks a lot. A Par says, uh, what to give you and Chaco? I uh, wanted to give you and Chaco some props on the dope podcast. Just finished it and love how the combo went. Keep it up. Take my diaper money. Appreciate you, brother. And yeah, I, look, I think we've had some great podcasts, you know. Look, I don't like to brag. I don't, I don't usually like, I'm not a very like, you know, I don't really have like a big ego. I'm not out here like trying to say I'm the best. You know, I'm not. But, but uh, I think I might have something with this podcasting thing. I think I might be uh, pretty decent actually at it. So, uh, I love the podcast that we've had thus far. The one that's going to come out later today with Jay is all is honestly an incredible podcast. I really do hope you guys give it a shot. But uh, yeah, and if uh, if you know some people out there that want to be on the podcast or whatever, um, let me know. I'm currently reaching out to a lot of different folks like. Uh, this Monday, and I pushed it back a week just so it could be more time sensitive and relevant. Uh, this Monday, I'm going to be sitting down with Soups, Matt Ramos of TikTok fame, you know, and we're going to talk about like his come up, what's going on with, uh, you know, DC Marvel and fandom and how he sees the industry changing and stuff like that. So I think that's going to be a really good one. I'm supposed to sit down and talk to Star Wars Meg uh, soon, and I'm just going to be like, Meg, but why you like this? Meg, but aren't you worried about this? Meg, why are you so positive all the time? Hey, Meg, what's up with this? Meg, how you feel about this? Like, that's going to be that podcast. So that'll be pretty cool. 
Torian Trussell says, with a $20 holla, holy mother love and love of mothers. Very generous. Says, burnt out on DC. Its continuity isn't very connective. And with depressingly dark stories, MCU uh, outshines that franchise. Excelsior! Star Wars feels like it's getting over-glorified through the years. Expectation is always high. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting take there. You know, Dorian, I don't know how we exactly got here. But yeah, Marvel has really just I mean, they're they're the the they're the biggest game in town. They seem to be not they, they seem to be able to avoid a lot of the problems that other franchises and companies have. I mean, look, we, we talked a lot about the Evangeline Lilly thing today. I think it's ultimately gonna blow over. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think they probably paid a lot of money to Shuri to get her to take the jab. Um and so like they're just they're figuring it out and you know, I think Feige's, you know, some people think I give Feige way too much credit. I, I, I don't. I honestly think that he is uh, a, a really effective leader in many different ways, you know, front facing and also behind the scenes. So it's just crazy how they're in such a good spot and the fandom is in such a good spot. You know what I mean? Like we have, generally speaking, so much to look forward to with Marvel and not a lot to complain about, you know? And uh, DC is is not that way. DC has a whole myriad of problems. Star Wars has a whole myriad of problems. So it is really interesting. Marvel almost has this thing where we at the same time expect certain Marvel projects to be the the best thing ever. And we also don't get that mad when some of the other projects don't slap. You know? It's really interesting. Like, what a, what a uh, rarefied position they find themselves in over there at Marvel. You know? Haunted Autumn says with a five dollar holla says peacemakers greater than NFTs. Bro. I understand people feeling one way or the other when it comes to Ezra. I really do actually. I'm not clowning. Like I do. If you love the guy, you think that whole situation in Iceland was overblown. You think people are unfair to him because he's weird. Whatever it is. You like the dude. Uh, I understand that. If you hate the dude, you think he's super weird. You think this was a total PR stunt. The dude's ridiculous. He choked out that lady. She's probably buried somewhere. Like, I, I understand both sides. When it comes to Evangeline Lilly, when it comes to the, the, the needle, when it comes to the health stuff, I understand both sides. I understand feeling like this is an infringement. This is, you know, whatever. I understand people feeling like it's it's actually bigger than that. This is a unique situation that requires certain bending. I understand that side of it. I actually even understand people liking the Batman. I understand it if you like Hot Rod wearing hockey pad, wearing sparkly-ass skin motherfucking Batman. Dude, I get it if you like it. I understand it. I can understand it. The NFT hate. The NFT hate. And this sort of weird coordinated effort. To hate on NFTs, to hate on crypto, to hate on all these things. The very same folks that 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 claim to want things to be uh, flattened out. That claim to want to give access to di to disenfranchised people and, and, and less fortunate people to, to uh, financial well-being and, and equity. The hate of NFTs triggers me to no end. I don't understand it. And uh, I'm... I, 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 I think I'm going to have an aneurysm live. Patrick says with a $5 holla, the just be happy you're at least getting content, people. Never ever had even a single bad word to say about Batman and Robin. First of all, Patrick, there will be no Batman and Robin slander in this chat. Bat nipples, constant incredible one-liners from Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze. Huh. Hilarious, huh? Hilarious stuff going on in that film, bro. Throw that movie back on again, and uh, and just give it a second chance. Give it a second chance. But I understand the spirit of what you're saying. Yeah, I, I think that whole "be happy you're getting stuff" argument is just ridiculous. It's like it does. It just it, it's meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. You know what I mean? Uh, Dan says with a five dollar holla. Have you seen theory that Luke was cloned? Both. Uh, a version of Sabaoth, Moth Gideon knew, and when Mando goes to see Grogu, we get Thrawn. I haven't heard that theory. It seems pretty fun, though. Something like that could be on the table. Um, I think they should do a... You know what I think they should do? Young Palpatine is Sabaoth. 
like a clone, an actual young Palpatine clone. That would be kind of fun. But yeah, there's all sorts of fun stuff they could do. Mike Motherflippin' Porter says, Ezra Miller is just a flash in the pan. Obi Rob Kenobi says, make baby Banthas. Yeah, they didn't really, though, because I think that same Bantha that Boba says goodbye to in episode four is seen in the beginning of episode five uh, hanging on a meat hook. So I don't think it made any baby Banthas. It's kind of a tough one. Uh, Han Shop first says, no din in the next episode. Boba will finally have a showdown. And show his stuff. Other bounty hunters show up. At the end, Luke, Din, and Grogu show up. That's possible. I st- I just don't think that's the way they're going to go with it, bro. But hey, possible. Possible. Eyeball10,000 with a $10 holla. Very generous. Says, if you're a Nerdvenger, can you watch slash listen to the Nerdvenger only stream at a later date? Yes. I believe all of that stuff is still available if you go through the community tab. And there. Also, I've heard they're going to have a playlist soon for members-only stuff. Uh, members-only stuff is in beta right now, but I think they're figuring a lot of stuff out, so yes. Um, and do I get any nerd coin for this super chat? Yes, you should. You should. Uh, really enjoy your content. Thanks. Yeah, you should absolutely get nerd coin for every super chat that you send in. X-Wing says, just be grateful you're getting content. Is the benchmark for people who lick drywall and eat paint chips. <laughs> uh, I mean, do you want mandates against that, X-Wing? Is that what you're saying? Are you anti-drywall licking? Do you, do you think that you want to mandate... Dry, I don't fucking know. Thanks for the support, man. Uh, MCU Drew says... Being able to say, I don't know, shows so much intelligence. Well, thanks, man. I, I think it's awareness. Maybe not necessarily intelligence. But look, intelligence, self-assuredness, unfortunately, is one of the most commonly found traits in fools. Like, people that are really, really self-assured, usually uh, uh, stupid. You know what I mean? Unfortunately. If you're really intelligent, you probably recognize all the different ways that you could be wrong about a thing. And it's like, it's kind of off, I kind of equate it to martial arts. Like, if you've ever seriously studied martial arts, you're actually not really trying to get in fights. Because you understand it, and you know what can happen. And I think it's the same thing of intelligence. You don't want to get into a, uh, necessarily like an argument that's so one way or the other. Because if you're really intelligent, you can recognize all the different pitfalls, traps, and uh, lack of information. You know, especially with something like this, right? But either way, I appreciate it. Mate says with a $100 million donation, remember when Tem talked about Ewoks? Maybe Luke is training Grogu on Endor and didn't Boba visit there? By the way, RIP Batflick. He was great, but Badinson looks incredible. Stay mad and take my money. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. About Batflick. You're probably right, though. Um, as far as uh, the Endor thing, that's really cool, man. I hadn't thought about that, but that would be a really, really fun scenario. I mean, can you imagine uh, if uh, he's he gets a like he's like, oh, Boba needed muscle, and then he gets a, gets a bunch of Ewoks. Like, can you imagine it? Like, look, I'm just I'm not trying to be like a dick about this, but Boba has kind of got up stage in his own show, and he really isn't doing that much. It's fine, but he's really not doing that much. Can you imagine if he's in a fucking robe for the final battle and goddamn teddy bears are running around Mos Espa doing damage and and messing people up? On the one hand, I think it's hilarious. On the other hand, I'm like, bruh, who did Boba Fett fans piss off? What is this targeted hate towards Boba? What is going on? Uh, Ross says, you balancing well, young Jedi. To me, my fence. Thanks, bro. Thanks, man. I, I, I feel like you know, probably pretty decent job of uh, of balancing here. But uh, you never know. You never know. Scott F. says, Happy Friday. Appreciate your fence riding today. It made the controversy more fun than an argument. Also, Batman going to slap. That's my goal, Scott. My goal was let's make fun of this. Let's have fun. Let's just take a step back. Let's chuckle at it. He, he, he. You know? I'm sure some people liked certain aspects of that and not the other. That's fine. And yeah, the Batman's going to slap. 
probably, much to my chagrin. John Shaw says, People, for some reason, like being told what to do. They don't like true liberty. Realize that... Realize... Oh, wait, what? Realize, when you give government an inch, they take three yards. I... Yeah. So... I understand that opinion. I totally get where your feelings uh, come from with regards to that. Would it, you know, the only thing I would say to that really is, um, I think it's totally fair to not want a uh, government overreach and to not want a government to impede on freedoms. And I think that uh, most people can kind of agree that that's the best way to do it however if you steel man the argument for some of what is happening right now i think you will realize that beyond uh petty people on social media and beyond people just trying to get brownie points or whatever or not really knowing what the fuck they're talking about i think at the very least you got to be able to acknowledge this is kind of a unique situation and that some hard and fast rules and uh, philosophies or beliefs about government and control and liberty, these are the times when some of those things are at the very least on shaky ground, right? So that's all I'll say there. I acknowledge and understand where you're coming from. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of liberty myself, you know what I mean? But... Uh, it's not a it's not a video game, you know. RG twenty eighty eight says with a five dollar holo says, My question is how does Din know where Grogu is? That's true, that's a good question. Did we miss something? I don't remember him being told or finding out where they're located. That's actually an awesome point, bro. I've been thinking about that a lot, and I've been thinking you know what I keep asking myself is like, do I care? Like, am I gonna get upset? Like if Mando just rolls up on a planet where Luke is at with no explanation whatsoever. Am I going to be upset? I'm going to be a little confused, but I don't know if I'm going to be upset. You know? I'd love an explanation for why. Maybe they'll give us one. But that is a good one, man. I I'm not sure how to feel about it. I guess it's going to depend on the execution, you know? John Shaw says, okay, John, you're, you're really going at it. And you're more than willing to do that, but I just, you know, it's obvious, you know, you're trying to get your, trying to have your voice be heard. It's all good. Voter ID racist, but vax ID is not. Even though majority of unvaxxed citizens are African Americans, elite loves division and two class system. Um, yeah, again, look, I acknowledge that that is a set of beliefs that a lot of folks have. Um, and I understand the seemingly front, front facing hypocrisy of that situation. I would say that's kind of a low hanging fruit argument. Um, it's not necessarily invalid, but it's not also to the razor's edge to the point. Do you know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of stuff that can be true, but not necessarily the most pertinent actual criticism of action that's being taken. You know what I mean? Like all this stuff is, it's not, it's not that what you're saying is necessarily wrong. I just think it's an incomplete picture of the situation. And I hope you can appreciate that. All right, let's see if there's any more. Let's see if there's any more. You guys are probably like, dude, how is he so good at fence riding? I, how? How is he? How can he ride that fence like that? I ain't never seen a man ride a fence like that. Holy shit. He might be the chosen one of fence riding. What fence riding talent? Yeah, no, I know. I'm pretty good. Uh, John Shaw says, only the Rock 20, uh, 24 heals the culture war. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, bruh. Uh, Dan Larkett says, uh, I love you, Josh. Appreciate you. You're navigating this well. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate you right back. Ethan K says, with a $5 holo, social media is meant to trigger us these days. I'm no longer on it because of this. Uh, it's terrible for our mental health. Yeah, unfortunately, it is kind of bad for the mental health. 
Uh, I can only, uh, what? Hit 100 roll? 100k on a roll? Well, too bad all the nerd coins going away anyway. Too bad the nerd coins going away. See ya. See ya. Um, yeah, so social media definitely meant to trigger us. Here's the thing, though. When I was thinking about my own situation for this, right? Because, yeah, I had, like, kind of a rough week of getting, like, triggered by people and wanting to be combative. For my own part, I realized that, uh, number one, I'm under a little bit more stress. Number two, um, I haven't been working out as much uh, because it's been hoth over here. You know what I mean? It's, like, just literally, like, four feet of snow in my front yard. It's crazy. Um, so I haven't been doing that. I haven't been sleeping. Well, there's a lot of external factors. Okay, normally I can navigate the space on social media pretty dang well. But I think the truth is a lot of people live pretty unhealthy lives and they don't set themselves up for success on social media. And, uh, you know, I had a tweet earlier today. It's kind of ironic, right, with what we're talking about now. But uh, my tweet earlier today was sort of acknowledging that uh, I have been more combative on social media. And it's like I wanted to take a personal responsibility for that and try to kind of step away from it. Um, we can't always control our mental state. But I will say that choice and what you can control is a huge factor into how you're going to go forward in the world, right? So um, social media can definitely be triggering. But I think the responsibility falls to you to um, try to keep yourself healthy and balanced. And if you can't properly engage with it, like if you are engaging in social media in a way that's like bringing you more stress, more anxiety, more dopamine, more serotonin, whatever then that's kind of on you. Like, social media is not knocking on your door either. <laughs> Colin McGoldrick with another $20 holla. Hey, man, are, did you just sell a NFT or something? Because you got, you've been throwing money like it ain't no bang, dog. What'd you do? Sell a, sell a NFT or something? You don't have to, you can tell me privately. I know everyone will come at you and, and freak out because you like NFTs, like some kind of monster. Um, but yeah, uh, Colin says, great podcast with Nerd of the Rings. Thanks, man. I thought it was a really good combo, too. That guy's awesome. Uh, Max Ross says, with a five dollar holla, says, a true Zen master never says he's really good at being Zen. Always the student. So you have a long way to get triggered. Ah! It's true. It's true. RG2088 <coughs> says, uh, Josh, you really are great at podcasting. Hey, thanks, man. Thank you, man. What a cool world that we live in, you know? What a cool world we live in where uh, you can be just good at talking and, like, figure out a way to make that into a thing. You know, it's kind of, it, hey, it's pretty cool. Michael Phantom says of the $5 holla, says, if you would have told me when I was a teen I would like Marvel over DC or Star Wars, I would say you're crazy. Yet here we are. Also, did you get... Uh, two member ch chats. No, I apologize, man. The members chats don't show up on this screen. And uh, so I missed a bunch of them. I apologize to the members. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And you're right. Like, the thing about... Um, the thing about Marvel and all that was it did kind of play second fiddle to a lot of these other things. I was a DC first guy when I was reading comics when I was younger. And the Avengers were, like, okay. Like, the Avengers were never really, like, dope. And it's just so crazy that what they've done with that IP, what they've done over there is so crazy. It's really, really crazy. Apar says, never forget Mando's ship has a carburetor in space. Oh, man, I got so triggered when people were bringing that up. Like, people were like, bruh, why does it have a carburetor? There's no air in space. And I was like, dude, it's a fucking world with space wizards and laser beams that blow up planets. And you're mad about a carburetor and airflow and aerodynamics? I'd probably just relax. I'd probably just calm down a little bit, you know? Uh, Darth Princess says, who is the villain for Thor? I think it's uh, Gore the God Butcher, who's a really, really cool character. Actually, I'm super excited to see that play out. Smokey Kenobi with a five dollar holla says DC will always have a special place in my heart, but expectations low for movie slash TV content. Do you like Birds of Wait Book of Boba Fett being a miniseries 
uh, trying to Mando or to Beta. Uh, so I'm going to try to reserve my judgment until we see the show in its entirety. Uh, I sort of broke this down in the video I did yesterday a lot. I got to be honest, man. I feel bad for hardcore Boba fans. Um, as sort of more of a, just a general Star Wars fan, I'm very excited about where all these things are going. But it is a weird show. I mean, we got to give it its fair shot of these last two episodes, but it really does feel like a four-episode mini-arc of him getting beat up in the desert and then, like, a whole other thing going on with, like, Mando. And, look, Mando's just way more interesting, way more compelling. Did we need Book of Boba Fett? Like, for real, for real. Like, what if the actual sum total of what Boba does, like, just as a show, like, here's the deal. Here's the deal. What if Boba... At the end of the day, doesn't really do much to push the character forward, but ultimately serves to push Mando's character and the world forward just a little bit, right? I don't know. That that doesn't necessarily feel feel uh that great. Kind of feels like maybe we didn't need it. Now, as I said yesterday, um, I feel like it's probably reasonable to say that they just tried something and it didn't work. Like, I don't know if I can say, like, 100% this was a show that they just, you know, rushed out and put together in a sloppy way. I, I don't know. It could have just been something that they ultimately did think would be dope, and that just didn't land with a lot of fans. I don't know. Um, So, we'll have to wait and see, man. I, I don't know if I love uh, what they did with Bubba, but we've got to wait and see. I, I cannot make that call yet. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's see what everybody else is saying. Here's Kendall. Hit 100K on a roll. Suck it. Take my money. No, Kendall, no. Although we will have some really cool things coming to the NerdCoin store and some cool stuff you can try to win. So, uh, yeah, you'll make good use of it. But also, I can't believe it. Uh Filmic FPV says, screw the political talk. Let's talk about Secret Wars. Oh, man, you're going to love... I'm working on a big video, bro. I'm working on a big Secret Wars video. And, in fact, I'm trying to get... This is another reason why, like, I'm trying to get editors and stuff that, like, help me out. Because, look, there's a lot of, like, day-to-day -day sort of, like, news-type stuff that we got to try to, uh, you know, go over in a timely manner. We can't always, like, put a ton of great editing into that kind of stuff, just kind of given my current schedule. But there's stuff like my secret wars video which like i'd love to give uh an editor like a week or or just some time to like work on something like that to really really make it a great video i'd like to have like some well put together like well thought out juicy content as well as the day-to-day -day stuff uh but the secret wars my anticipation my thoughts about it i'm very excited so yeah, look, we don't usually spend a lot of time talking about like political stuff like that. And today's a little bit of a different stream. But I felt like, honestly, I was like, you have two choices. You can ignore these two big things that are blowing up that everybody's talking about. Uh, and you can try to talk about some other stuff, like maybe a Secret Wars. Or you can choose to engage these topics in sort of a creative, funny, on-brand sort of way. So that's what I chose to do. Uh, this isn't something we're going to do all the time. That's not really what I do. But... Uh, Maybe I just thought, I think there's a way to talk about these things in, in, in a way that's uh, a little bit more respectful and not as contentious, you know? Dirty says with a $5 holler, says, If Mando is somewhat Force-sensitive, do you think he could be talking with Grogu through the Force and just think that's a power Grogu has? Yeah, I think that's actually possible. I, I might even... I mean, what if Gro what if Mando can feel where Grogu is? Pretty interesting, right? But uh, yeah, I appreciate you, brother. Hope you're doing well. And um, I think there's potentially a lot of cool stuff they could do with that duo and with the Force and, and their future. Because I know some folks are like, well, why not just make Grogu the Mandalorian and have him do it? Well, my answer to that is because you have 900 years in the canon to do whatever you want with Grogu. I think right now you need to make uh, Din Djarin's arc really, really interesting and keep Yoda or keep uh, Grogu as just being a little baby, fun, loving sidekick. You know what I mean? So. Nuck and Futs 
says, how does Mando's bounty tracker work? How does it know where his bounty is? I'm sure it's not hard for him to get Grogu. Yeah, there's tech like that that could explain it. I would assume it's like some kind of algorithm scanner. You know what I mean? I don't truly know. But uh, yeah, I think that's how the fobs work. Again, it's it's a universe with space wizards. You know what I mean? Uh, Michael Phantom says, this, if you don't agree with me, I hate you culture, is getting old. Do you think Marvel defend Lily like they did Crisp Rat, or will they Karana her? Who the fuck is Crisp Rat? What? what am I missing something here? Um, what do I think Marvel's gonna do? Probably not say much, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I don't think they're gonna say much about it, and I don't think it's gonna end up being that big of a thing. But we'll see. You know, we'll see from here. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, C Dub says, "When will we get a Thor four trailer? Super Bowl possibly? Yeah, I'd say that's possible. Uh, I hope for a Lord of the Rings trailer. I haven't heard anything about a, a Thor four trailer. I, I do think that enough of like it, they could like the film is that far along or whatever. But um, yeah, who knows uh for sure there, C Dub. Also, that's a super generous super chat, man. I appreciate you. Thank you, my guy." MCU Drew says, I didn't grow up nerd culture love. The MCU got me to watch slash read all other IPs as well. Dude, that's fair. That's fair. Kind of like doing it big for fandom in general. It's pretty cool. MK Matt says, yo, I actually think Boba's arc as a crime lord is just beginning. I think we're deaf getting season two of Book of Boba Fett, and it will be much more fulfilling for Boba fans. I guess that's also a possibility. I just think, like, honestly, here's here's my take on it. And, and look, maybe this is, like, if this is enough to trigger you, then you, you need to, you, you, you need some, some cereal. You know what I mean? You need some cereal, and you need some Saturday morning cartoons, and you need some, 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 yeah, you need something. Because my take on this is, if you're a Boba Fett fan, and you've been a Boba Fett fan for, like, 30-plus years, or even 10-plus years, and you lo- you just you like Boba. You always argue with people about how badass he is. You know, you love all the EU stuff. You love the comic book stuff. Um, and you're like, dude, Boba. And you're getting ramped up for this show. And then you get what you what we all got in those first four episodes. I just think it's reasonable to say that's probably not what you wanted. They made the choice. That's the story. I'm not sitting here saying like retcon it, you know. But what I am saying is I don't think it's toxic to not love what we got with Boba. It's not it's not Alpha John Wick type shit. And beyond that, Mando comes in and does pretty much all the things that Boba Fett fans wanted Boba to do. So I don't think that's toxic. Like I think that's totally reasonable. But that's my take. And if you don't like it, you're wrong. You're wrong! Okay, cool. Let's just hang out in the chat chat for a little bit now and see what everybody's saying, see what everybody's thinking. What's on your mind? What's on your mind, chat? Is everybody being good? Crisp Rat is Star-Lord. What? Crisp Rat? What the fuck? I don't, I, maybe I'm missing something there. Sea of Thieves is fun. Sea of Thieves is fun. I've played it a couple times. It's cool. World Famous says, long time, buddy. Hey, what's up, my guy? Hope you're doing well. Josh, honestly, I'll take good Star Wars wherever I can get it. Heard that. <laughs> yeah, is everybody being good? Did Affleck's script have Deathstroke? Probably. Probably. No, I I get who Chris Pratt is. I just don't understand the Crip Chris Pratt. Like, is that? Oh, was it a typo or some shit? Like, I don't understand it. What do you think of the theory that Mando is the badass everybody wants Bo- wanted Boba to be, and now Boba has the Godfather type? Blah 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 blah. Oh uh, yeah, I mean sure. I'm always good. You're the poopy butthole. Hey, you don't say that. Hey, don't say that. Uh, Sergeant Woods says, I like Boba more in season two of Mando than I do in Book of Boba Fett. Me too. Me too. Uh, let's see here. Wait, 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 wait. 
EO was causing trouble. He has been banished to the Phantom Realm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Some people can't handle it. Some people can't handle it. Uh, when's that Geek Culture Explained slash Den of Nerds podcast coming? Oh, oh, I already sat down and did a podcast um, with uh, Comics Explained. Rob and I already did a podcast, and I thought it was a very good one, and one that I think is still really relevant and that you can have a lot of fun with. But uh, yeah, we've been talking about doing something else soon. You know, everybody's busy, bro. That's the thing. Like, everybody's busy out here making these videos. You know what I mean? Do I think Boba will survive the series? I do. I do. I think it'll be fine. Well, Boba versus Cad Bane soon. Let's go. It would be cool. That would be cool. Oh, wow. Okay, so Tim Roth... Uh, says Abomination will be human again. He'll probably go back and forth between human and whatever, but... Harris McGrady, I'm so sorry, bro. They don't pop up where I was reading the Super Chats from, so I have literally no way to read it or to get back to it. So I am sorry, my guy. I wish they, uh, I wish they showed up where the Super Chats show up, but uh, unfortunately, they do not so just put it into the chat i'll try to take a peek today ain't my day what are you rolling josh what's for dinner oh i have no idea man i have no idea i've got to like write some scripts i got we have a stream at 1 p.m today for the uh nerd venture at the prime level we're going to talk a little bit about business have i have i seen the leaked 1313 footage yeah we watched it yesterday actually um so busy day but i'm trying to go out and get uh some gamestop stuff uh, the gift card and some swag to give away for these next two weeks of Book of Boba Fett. Uh, and also, I think we're going to get a Switch for Elisa. And I think Elisa and I both are going to play some Pokemon this weekend. Where's the Fight Club podcast? Ah, it's probably not happening, man. I think streams like this for at least the next couple of years, uh, streams like this are probably the closest I'll get to Fight Club territory. Yeah, yeah. Let's get to 500 likes. We can do it, do it, do it. Let's do that. Secret Wars trilogy rumored. Yeah, but unfortunately, that's a bad account. Like that Moth Culture account, they're not they're not good. I keep getting tricked into like retweeting their stuff. What gaming movie do you think The Rock is doing next? I don't know. That's a really interesting one. I don't know. I I honestly couldn't tell you. Been losing all day. Damn, nerd coin. Hey, look, man. You don't got to gamble, you know? What switch are we getting? OLED, light, regular? I don't know. We're kind of going between the light and the reg. Yeah. Here in PR, temp is 87 degrees. Oh, that's nice. It's freezing here. Dude, Nova Corp ship. Nice. Going to teach the youngling to dink? I don't know. We'll see. Heard you're a fan of Screen Crush? Yeah, exactly. See? Uh, the Rock as The Rock has no range two-dimensional actor. Yeah. The Rock is actually an incredible actor, but his... The character that he plays every day on social media and shit like that, that's the actual role. And he's actually really good at it. Smokey Kenobi says, I think they're trying to cement Boba as a Dawn who doesn't do dirt anymore. Hold place of power in the future of Filoniverse. Mando is Zoomer's Boba. Uh, yeah, but I mean, people still could be upset by that. You know what I mean? But... Uh, I think that's fair. Like, and you don't have to be upset about it. I'm not saying you do, but I think that a lot of folks could be uh, upset about it. Yeah, I know. What? You rolled a 99? Shut it down. Shut it down. Yeah, only some departments and some cities' workers are mandated here in LA. Yeah, yeah, it's like capitalism at work. It's a free, it's free market, right? Like, like that's why a lot of that stuff is just it's it's sort of. 
it's confusing and it's nuanced. I, I think that the easy play is to be like one way or the other, you know, you state your case, get angry about it or whatever. Just for me personally, like the more I look into it, I'm like, yeah, it's a pretty interesting situation. I don't know what the exact answer is. Uh, but that's why we have, uh, you know, the judicial system. That's why a lot of this stuff will, you know, go to the courts and the courts will decide. And then, you know, there can be precedents and all these different things. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Missed the super chat? My bad, bro. What was it? Let me see if I can find it. My bad, bro. Did I see the new theory about the Darksaber being powered by a shard of Baskar instead of Kyber Crystal? Uh, talented Mr. Griffin, I did not see that. That sounds incredible. I think, and by the way, I still got to put out your, your XL, your shirt. Um, and I'm so sorry about that, bro. I should get it out in the next couple of days. Things have just been crazy. Um, but I think even if it is a Kyber Crystal, it's got to be some kind of unique Kyber Crystal, right? And I hope there's something more to that. Like learning more about the lore of like Tar Vizsla and how he actually built that saber, I think is going to be so interesting. And I think that's really why they're setting up Din Djarin to be the force sensitive. I'm not saying he's going to be a Jedi Mandalorian because there are no Jedi at this point other than Luke and like his students. But what I think is that Din is going to become balanced in the same way that Tar Vizsla was, you know? So that's crazy. I didn't see that. All right, guys, I got to get on out of here. Much love. Why are people calling him Chris Pratt? Chris, are we not supposed to say Chris Pratt anymore? Like, I don't understand. Or are you guys just messing with me? You guys just messing with me or what? Gears of War? Bro, that'd be cool. Luke killed Grogu already? What? <laughs> That's dark, dude. Sheesh. Sheesh. You get canceled if you say his real name? Hmm. Interesting. Look, let me just say this. Let me leave you with this idea. You know that one thing that you really don't like or that one actor or actress that you really don't like that one stance out there that you can't stand it when people bring it up or whatever that thing that triggers you and upsets you whatever it is you know whatever whatever one of the various uh you know tension dramas scenarios that has happened in the past couple of years that thing that you just it gets just just gets under your stand your skin i love it I love the thing and I support the person who triggers you most. The thing you can't stand that gets you all upset. I love it. I support that person. That belief, maybe I even hold it. So get triggered, stay mad, shut your goddamn mouth, and have a good fucking weekend. Much love to you all. I'm going to get on out of here. As I always say, I hope you're having an awesome and a nerdy day. And I'll see you. That's right, you. In the next video.
Is is everybody gone? Did everybody leave? Leave, leave. Yo. Is there anybody as ridiculous as me out here making this kind of content? Like, what do you, what do you guys think? Like, do you think that I just might be the most ridiculous person out here making this content? <laughs> Ezra Miller. <laughs> you wow, bro. <laughs> It wouldn't be so ridiculous if you just cut your goddamn hair. The, the hair did get cut. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> ah. Much love, man. Much love. I just was like, what are we going to do? Let's, let's fucking wing it, you know? Wing it. Let's piss everybody off, but not too much. And, uh, yeah, I think we did it. I think we did it. All right, much love, guys. I I'll see some of you soon. Uh, the rest of you, check out some of the videos. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Much love. I'll see you soon.